Hi, welcome to Think Tech. We are raising public awareness about technology, energy, diversity, and globalism. This show is center stage. I am your host, Donna Blanchard, proud managing director of Kumu Kahua Theater. And we're coming to you live from Pioneer Plaza in the heart of downtown Honolulu, very near Kumu Kahua Theater. I have a surprise guest for you today. I am interviewing Chantelle Seville, who is a host of another show here on Think Tech, um, Savvy Chicks. And this is a fortuitous event that, unfortunately, if you tuned in to see Tali, uh, we had to move her show back in week. She's a little bit under the weather. But it just so happened that Chantelle is right here, so we're probably going to have the best conversation ever. Welcome <laughs> to the Thanks. show. I'm not under the weather, but I might go into having a baby you now might while go we're here. into labor. <laughs> Labor, so we'll Is it see your first go. one? First, yeah. It'll take hours. Don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> No, I mean, the, the, yeah. not the hard stuff, but the initial stuff. It goes so we're safe. So we're safe, good. guys. So Excellent. we're fine. We're going to talk about uh, expression, and it's and it's it's really cool. My, you know, on my show, I talk with artists about what they do and how they do it, but most important to me is why they do it. So I think there are a lot of uh, intersections within our shows because we're both geeked out on how we express ourselves and why, what we're doing. And bottom line, I don't know if you found this in your show when you're talking with different people, the bottom line for me that I always find with artists is people feel like they just have to. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, climb the mountain because it's there. I don't get that. There's mountains around here. I haven't climbed. I'm okay with that. But when it comes to expression, if I, it will leak out of me somehow. When it's, I've had, you know, it's like cause I, I believe for my myself and for my guests, it's deep. And once you sort of get a taste for that expression, you just, you just keep wanting to express it, and it's almost like you can't turn back. Um, I feel that's what creatives find within themselves. It's just people think, you know, they're or we're, <laughs> we're crazy as well. Crazy, you know, why are you doing this? Oftentimes, it's not going to work. But yet, there's something just deep within you that fire burns and you just keep going no matter what and resilience and yeah. and whatnot so have you have you had well I want to get into you know what you do and um, your guests and actual forms of creation but first let me ask this question have you had a time in your life when you didn't have access to a direct line of expression and had to deal with that well um, it's actually interesting right now just about to, to transition in, in my life to, to have to be a mother to having a baby and I think my whole life I've always been like with a big imagination and big dreams and wanting to, to do things and wanting to inspire you know, others to be healthy and to live their dreams. And I'm at a point at the moment, it's like, is that still what I do? Or is, is the, you know, or am I just going to, not just going to be a mother, is it like motherhood? But what I find that brings me most happiness is to keep that fueled within me and knowing even though I'm going to have a little girl soon, that I still continue to follow what's deep and inspires me because that keeps me happy and lit up and going. So mm. to answer your question, in the middle there, it kind of there that that's just one example of a time that you almost feel flat, and then when you bring that inspiration back in you, it's just like it brings life back to your face. Yeah. So okay. you might find uh, uh, a couple years ago, I interviewed the poet Jamie Gusman, and her po she writes very beautiful poetry, but it was always dark i mean some amazing dark stuff that t would touch the sort of the underbelly and everyone you know mm. um but she has her baby is i believe nine months old or seven months old now and i asked her if it's changed her poetry at all because she's going she's editing some stuff that she wrote before the baby was born and she said yes it is definitely changing the way she's expressing herself she's finding more light in her work and i think that's it gives me goosebumps to think about <laughs> how you know it's these are, then it's exciting it becomes yeah. very exciting and i think yeah every, um, every time i've pursued something that seemed really true to me it all, um, it's like the universe sort of, everything meets you and, and goes on your way. So for instance, there's times I'd pursue something that I thought was a good idea or I should do, and then it doesn't really happen. It's like you're knocking on doors and they don't open, but yet something you really want to do, you knock on the door and like, come on in. And I just find, <laughs> and when I speak to other artists and creatives, they say the same thing. When they actually go for what they really want or give themselves permission to be their true authentic self, it's like you just attract those people that are like you and they might have seemed out of reach but they understand you so they're welcoming and and I find that really interesting and, and it seems like a synergy throughout all of those different whether they be designers or musicians or actresses or actors or whatever they are as soon as you're really true to yourself then you 
yeah. can collaborate with those who are as soon as you're clear clear yes that's clear that's and such then a you, truth. you recognize when you see those people that yeah you are aligning yourself with what is that New Zealand in your accent <laughs> so I grew up in Saskatoon Saskatchewan Canada little girl big dreams in the freezing cold prairies of Canada and then I always knew I wanted to go to Australia so I've moved to Australia when I was 18 oh. lived there for most of 15 years um, and now here in Hawaii so my accent sort of Canadian Australian Hawaiian I'm <laughs> just kidding which sounded like <laughs> strangely like New Zealand to me uh, I've never been called New Zealand I've got Irish before but never New Zealand oh. <laughs> so did you move to Hawaii with an art what was your pursuit that brought you here well I, uh, I, c I came here with my other half who's come for his his work here but I ended up finding my uh, big purpose as well continued here right at the think tech Hawaii studio so I, I just had that vision to interview really inspirational people with neat careers and I remember a long time ago when I took a leap of faith to create savvy chicks I was like if there's people out there being mermaids as a profession surely I can create a business that I love that is from my own inspiration within and sure enough I met mermaid Carielle here on the island and I've interviewed her and it it's just <laughs> neat how coming here I mean we're going back in January so not far now cut short a year but um, to be able to have had a great experience here and got some creative inspiration and met these mermaids who make a living from being a professional mermaid it's um, <laughs> yeah it's been quite neat <laughs> So uh, let's talk about your show. Okay. Um, what can we expect to see on Savvy Chicks on any given week? So um, the main intention of Savvy Chicks is to inspire and empower women and girls to be themselves, believe in themselves, and follow their dreams. So most of the shows are dedicated to young women and girls that I'm very passionate about, but we get you know, a lot of women and even men that watch. Um, and I interview people who have really cool careers and who have really put themselves out there and given themselves permission to be themselves at all you know costs and whatnot um, that's that's the main prerogative of the show but I also am passionate about wellness so sometimes you'll see um, some guests who are personal trainers or nutrition um, advocates uh, as well as confidence so mm -hmm. a lot of times again you'll find some of the guests that help empower women and girls with confidence so it's just you know the health and wellness the confidence and that's what you need to get basically the confidence to your creative expression because I mean this is a personal opinion um, is that when your creative expression is not unleashed and you're doing something that's not true to you, I often see people who are in careers and they're, they become quite depressed or insular, or um, which leads to you know, alcohol abuse or different things like that, um, that sure. can be prevented should you have more creative expression. And that's a personal opinion, but I believe pretty strongly in that. Do you feel like that, that sort of repression is a, more that's of a, a female a issue? Um, you know, I, I don't think so, to be honest. I think I love to speak to women because I am one and I can understand. But from being surrounded by a lot of men, I think that they put a tougher face on. Mm -hmm. But when you really get to talk to them, they, they're just dying to express. Uh, and especially, you know, you see it in, 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 in the Hollywood, you know, actors and comedians and these types of people, that if their creativity isn't fueled through something positive, they're using these types of things as a crutch to, to keep them going. Yeah, agreed. Uh, d um, I, I feel like, yes, there are men experience that sort of uh, repression as well, but I think that there are more things blocking women mm, from, oh gosh, yes. from following their dreams. Mm -hmm. And, the, you know, I'm, I'm 52. The, the longer, the, the more I see, the more I recognize that I didn't even realize why I, you know, that I really was always trying to be a, you know, a, a gracious host in any situation. I'm not talking about the show, but, <laughs> no, you know, but you are. smile <laughs> and where I don't think my brother was raised the same way. It's not that my parents um, were trying to, were trying to harm me and not him, but I think as girls very often we are raised to you know, smile and be pretty and be graceful and gracious and all of those things. And not so assertive and, and resilient. Work and work <laughs> hard and get a good job and do, you know, they're, they're told to exercise what's going on inside of them rather than to shield it. So that goes along with expression too. Yeah. And I think a lot of times uh, with women, girls, we can tend to lack self-confidence, which in turn holds us back from doing those things, whereas men can kind of be like, oh, I can do that, and they'll just go. Whereas mm -hmm. women might tend to, from my experience in seeing, doubt themselves a bit more. Um, whether or not the men are actually more confident, they just have that, you know, oomph about them that says I am. So it's something that... 
as women and girls, we really need to um, instill that within ourselves oh, and surround yeah. ourselves with people who, who believe in us as well, because I think that's huge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I think, I think we just saw all this played out in the election, in the presidential election. <laughs> we just saw a man with so much bombast and um, the, uh, arrogance you know, swinging it around out there, and then we saw a woman who, w with with all of the answers, literally, they both have their issues, but you know, uh, with a lot of answers and a lot of important people in the know saying, this is the woman that you should choose, and if she had done, uh, you know, an eighth of what he did, she wouldn't have been on the ticket, <laughs> let alone, you know, and if he had her credentials, we all would have voted for him. Oh yes, you know? yeah. That's. I mean, when it comes to that, that's yeah. That's a whole, a whole another, a whole another ball game. But it does, mm -hmm. it does really, um, you know, sit on a table, how society perceives things and people and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So, you know. yeah, it's. A, I mean, yeah, it's a framework to look at it because I do think. Well, I, I'm, I'm, extra glad that you're here today <laughs> because it's. I'm dressed in black because I'm in mourning. <laughs> I, I, I like to bring the light to any situation, so I, I try Thank to wear you. pinks and yellows, and because I mean, at the end of the day, what's sort of meant to happen happens, and yeah. and you know, there's what do you do now? There's not much you can do, so all you can do is just hope that perhaps the people he's surrounded with will, you know, bring some good things to the right. table. Well, and maybe it'll be a, an inspiring story for all women to know that we're not going to stop here. Oh, we're yes. We're going to keep going. And, and oh, just having, say, just having her in that position just gives yeah. other people... I mean, even Barbie. I don't know if you've seen Barbie lately, but Barbie has brought out... You, you can be President Barbie. There's, like, Entrepreneur Barbie. And these are really neat. I'm so passionate about these oh, neat good. different types of Barbies because, I mean, what is that doing to women in the next generation? Just saying that you can really be what you want to be. And when we talk about creative expression, I mean... There's creative expression, as I said, in designers and, you know, architecture and all these types of things. But it's also in business. Oh, like sure. there's so much yeah. create, um, you know, creative expression in business. And if that's allowed to be, you know, let out, it really brings a lot of solutions to different challenges, and it also brings light to, you know, sometimes a corporate world that can be quite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's yeah, yes, and hopefully it will be welcome, uh, um, welcomed and recognized uh, as we go on. I think more and more companies are welcoming and recognizing the need for expression and creativity. And it started with um, oh, there's a design, an advertising firm in Chicago that started. Uh, they're the ones who started having apples. They gave away apples at their reception desk, and it was kind of a new thing. But they had a playroom for their employees, oh. and Microsoft, uh, you know, knows that. You got to give t people time to play and exercise their creative sides yes, as well. Yes, play. Everyone needs to play more, no matter what industry you're in. You got to play. And that, when I did my marketing degree, that's what I also learned that they had all these cool companies that had games rooms and nap rooms and all this sort of thing. When you go and put someone in a desk and just go nine to five, do this, clock out, you're not going to get half the productivity than you would because everyone is creative inside. I believe yeah. everyone has creative expression, and as soon as you give them permission to use that, they're not only more loyal to you and the company, but what they come up with is incredible. They're I'm sure you might fail a bit, but at least you... But they're better. More. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going we're gonna to take our first break. We're going to come back and talk some more about how we're unleashing our creativity and how we can better ourselves through it. You are watching um, Center Stage. I had to think of the name of my show. <laughs> Center Stage on the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Network, and we'll be right back. Hello, I'm Marianne Sasaki. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii, where some of the most interesting conversations in Honolulu go on. I have a show on Wednesdays from 1 to 2 called Life in the Law, where we discuss legal issues, politics, governmental topics, and a whole host of issues. I hope you'll join me. With his blessings from above. Serve it generously with love. One man, one wife, one love, through life. Hi, we're back. This is Center Stage on the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Network. If you would ever like to join us in the studio downtown here in Pioneer Plaza, you may do so. Just email Jay, that's J-A-Y, at thinktechhawaii.net, and he will, dot com. I don't know why I said net. Thanks, Zuri. My 
ear. Uh, email Jay and he will hook you up. If you or someone you know really should be on my show talking with me about your artistic expression and why you do it and how you do it, um, then please get, uh, contact me. You can do it via Facebook, Donna.Blanchard, or at, um, at It's All About Donna on Twitter. Okay, we're back with Chantal Seville. Yes. I want to say Savi. I want to make you savvy. French. Savvy. Yeah, everyone, well, <laughs> that's where the, the name came from. Savvy, Savvy Chicks. Nice. S-A-V-I. Yes. So here's what I think. I think a lot of people would agree with the statement, yes, creativity and having fun is important. Um, yes, we all need that on our lives, in our lives. I think the difficult thing is that it's the same way often with exercise. You get a busy schedule and you exercise is the thing that goes because you don't see the immediate inherent value as much as I have to make these phone calls, I have to get this grant proposal out, <laughs> speaking from my own personal experience. <laughs> we know what you're doing today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you're, you're thinking about those things so the low-hanging fruit to kick aside may be um, what, it, what it is that you need most. Mm -hmm. I, engaging in some sort of creative, creative um, outlet or maybe figuring out how to make that creative outlet do your job for you and you know that is so so true because as I said I'm quite a health and fitness advocate and um, when you push those things aside long enough that's with the, whether it be health and fitness and creativity they're two main pillars in in actual success because to me success isn't measured by I've got this big empire success is measured by how you feel mm -hmm. and when you keep pushing those aside and keep pushing that forward and making sure all those things get done you're actually sacrificing your health and your mental health when if you just slip those in a bit each day consistently because it's all about consistency you'll find that whatever you do achieve is so much more rewarding yeah and i think that's why yeah pushing them aside is you know i've i've told people many times don't book it in your schedule then if you if you think you need to push it aside book it in your schedule because you'll always find time if if your friend calls and she's in dire need of help what will you do you'll go help her what if you have that proposal due you will go for coffee with her, wouldn't you? You know, so... Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm not that nice. No, yes, <laughs> I would. No, but, you know, or, you know, if something else came up, you know, if your child was sick or something like that, you always, there is a bit of time. Right. But we just don't give ourselves permission to, because, as you said, we just think that it's the low-hanging fruit, it's no big deal, but actually it'll give so much more... Um, oomph to your work if yeah. you do that. Yeah. And, in fact, I, I find I work faster if I do the things that I love more because I'm just enjoying it more. You know what, I discovered that there's actually work that I do, that, that I have been doing for years, that is, is part of my daily work, and I took a, um, one of these personality profile tests, and uh, it came out that I should, I, I excel at, and I should um, look for jobs that involve research, because I, and I realized when I saw it, I really do love research. So sometimes at work, here's an example of way to to put creativity and fun into your work easily, all I have to do is name it and say, this is, oh, now I have to research this, and then I feel differently about it. And then when I do it, it's like a little break. Yes. You know? That's, this is exactly it. That's what I'm saying about business. If you feel like you're not being creative in business, but then you tell yourself, oh, I'm actually doing creative research, all of a sudden, it doesn't seem so hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what other examples, what other people have you run into have found interesting ways of bringing creativity into their work? Well, I mean, I have to, I'll, I'll have to name a few because there's some, they're just genuinely creative people I'll start with, and then I can find some examples of people who found creativity within there and maybe not so exciting jobs. Okay. Um, but for the, for the first part, I mean, Charles Billich, who's, uh, Charles and Krista Billich have the Billich Art Gallery in Sydney, Australia, and he's just been one of those creative people who's pushed the boundaries and He's quite controversial. I mean, <laughs> if anyone looks about, he's quite controversial, but the man has got pieces in the White House and the Vatican, everywhere. He's 82, I believe, paints every day. That's all he does, he paints. Krista runs the gallery. So this is, this is something I find interesting as well about creatives. A real, you know, artist creative, if they pair themselves, not it doesn't have to be a husband and wife sort of thing, but with someone who's more business-minded, it can really help extend their, extend their art. So he just literally yeah. paints all day long. 82, he's been doing it for for years, and these paintings are worth, I don't know, three hundred, five hundred thousand dollars so wow. he's making a great income, per se, from painting, but what he says is he just, he creates his reality on a canvas, 
and he'll sit there and it's kind of a meditative thing for him. He doesn't really stress and he just paints all day long and, um, and it's just about him not caring. He's not painting for anyone, he's painting from within mm. onto the canvas. So I think that's someone who's taught me about real creative expression. It doesn't matter what people are saying or judging and it's just from if you take what's in and really true instead of trying to, you know, the, the market wants this or this wants this, then just to keep um, to keep going from within. So he's done that. Another neat thing is um, Jason Gretsch, a friend of mine who's a fashion designer in Australia. He he was doing amazing work. You know, he's doing bridal and all kinds of different things. But when he again gave himself permission to just go with those crazy sort of ideas he had in his head, sketch them out and start creating them, he just got more notice and more notice and more celebrities are coming to him. And then recently IBM even approached him and they've done a collaboration. So IBM has created, they have this program that helps designers enhance their design by helping predict the, the fashions and the colors and things like that. So spring racing carnival, huge in Australia. He pretty much, I don't even know how many, um, that and also the, all the football, they have these red carpet events, dressed majority of the celebrities, oh, front really? page of every paper literally from using his creative expression and then being recognized yeah. for that creative expression because when you're really true to yourself, IBM, before you know it, so those are uh, another IBM couple. IBM, well, I gotta stop for just a minute. IBM contacted him yep. and said, we'd like to work with you and they have, they're predicting what the, what the trends will be? I, I guess so. It's like, um, you know, there was pastel, so it wasn't something he was usually using, so they had like this, almost a pastel, this color and a purplish and so, yeah, I, I mean, I, I need to research it more myself, but I just was like, IBM? So like technology and fashion? Yeah, That's cool. cool. You know, but what's interesting, and as we're saying, so there's people there in that technology world, there's technology like, oh yeah, technology, but technology's sexy. I mean, technology paired up with this technology, I mean, they can, they're the ones behind all of the cool creations that come to the front. I mean, without technology, we wouldn't have things like Facebook, like this show, Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? So if people can really go, hey, why don't we try this or do this? Those, those back-end people have a lot of creativity. Oh, yeah, sure. What did you say, Zuri? Did you say the name of the company? Oh, sorry. <laughs> We're just chatting. Sorry. Yeah, she's not even talking to me. She's just talking to Zuri. I mean, she everyone wants to talk to Zuri. Zuri. <laughs> you know what it's like. That's nice to be yeah, able to talk I, to Yeah, I, I know what it's like having someone in my ear. Um, having someone in my ear. I wish I could have my therapist in my ear. I think, I think, I think the most, though, I think, you know, the most powerful thing I'm feeling at the moment is so many different entrepreneurs coming out, especially female entrepreneurs. I mean, female entrepreneurs are huge all around the world, and they're actually taking over, taking over the world. <laughs> but really, I mean, with the incomes and things like that, that female entrepreneurs are earning and what they're being able to create is just phenomenal. And that's the cre creative expression again. Oh, yeah. So it's, um... Yeah, do you feel like we inherently express... Um, uh, uh, whether you're male or female, we inherently express differently. We have... Um, I, we yeah, I ask the question and then I think like you see so many male chefs and it, that, is, that is a male dominated world. Mm. Yeah, and I don't really understand why that happens. That's a creative. Field. Oh yeah, it's totally creative. Um, yeah, definitely is a creative profession. But yeah, that's an interesting one. There's not as many female chefs. Yeah. When you look at um, clothing designers, I think the, the big houses we have, they're, they're probably pretty closely matched. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. do have Diane von Frustenberg and um, Chanel, and a, there's a lot of females in that. Um, uh, talking about Chanel, that is creative expression, and that is an amazing story. She was just yeah. an orphan girl. Yeah. You know, she's someone that... I mean, no, I'm, to be honest, it's, it's not really my style, and that's, again, creative expression. You have to know who you are to know what suits you. I appreciate it. I love it, love seeing people in it, but it's just not my, you know, this is my style. So, um, but her story coming from an orphan girl and where she got her inspiration from, and it was sort of from going to the churches, and she had herself her own little nickname and just had this fairy tale mm -hmm. world, and look what she created. And so. she went for it. I think sometimes, and uh, we just have a few more minutes left here, uh, when we talk about people who just go for it, that's a, that's a scary moment, oh, yes. you know, to say, I'm going to give up what I know or, what I know will get me a paycheck, but it's killing you on the inside. Oh, yeah. You know, to say, I'm going to take the sleep. I, I did it when mm -hmm. I started managing a theater. I was making a, 
a good living. I went from making a good living to getting by, but doing something that I'm much more passionate about. And, and that's what, I mean, going back to, for instance, say creatives or especially young people, if they start when they're young and they pursue what it is that they are interested in, slowly, 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 they'll get there. And they might not, you know, make a bazillion dollars, but they'll make a happy life. Um, I see a lot of times in women, say, you know, our ages, is that they end up being kind of almost miserable for so long only to take a leap of faith or switch or want to switch and never get to switch. So best that you, you know, maybe don't have a pair of $2,000 shoes, you buy $80 shoes, but you're happy. Because <laughs> really, I don't care what shoes you're wearing, <laughs> you know, as long as you're happy wearing them. And, and I do find that fashion, though, don't get me wrong, fashion is totally a way of expression. If you ever oh, want to yeah. feel different about yourself, or good about yourself, I'm not saying spend a million dollars, but I'm saying get a different lipstick out or put something on that's vibrant or really just you know channel that internal expression. Is If it's as simple as that, if you don't have a way to, you know, you're too busy at work, just think about your outfit in the morning. I think that's a good just way. Do, and it doesn't yeah. have to mean it's crazy. I mean, it could be black, but as long as it's black and- I'm and expressing just, myself. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's exactly it, but everyone's expression is different, and I think the more people can recognize and understand that, the more that they'll connect with it, so, yeah. yeah that's Did you have, uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to cut you off, you were talking about uh, ways that people express themselves that they find ways to build it in. To oh, their build work. it into their, yeah. into, their, um, into their daily lives. Like, I know people who are, for example, lawyers, but they find ways of, you know, researching different things that don't have to do with their... Uh, with their ca particular case just because it's interesting in their field so they just they keep mm -hmm. different ways of finding um, inspiration within what they do but to them it's exciting but also then they'll have a hobby perhaps so just because you love something doesn't mean you have to do it as a job they can be a lawyer but then play horse polo on the weekend and that's their that's their unleash their creative because people say no I actually really like my my job but how do I be more creative? And it's like, well, you can go do those things. You don't have to quit your job to do that if you love your job yeah. too. You just need to make sure that you take time to do it. Exactly. But thank you very much for being here. <laughs> I was glad, uh, really glad to get to know you yeah. in front of all of our friends here. Yes. <laughs> Welcome, so friends. Thanks thank, for coming to visit us. Thank you very much for being here. I, I would also like to thank our floor manager, Robert, who's right over there. Thank you very much. And Zuri Bender, as always, our studio overlord, who is in my ear. Thank you. And Jay Fidel, who somehow manages to put all of this together here at Think Tech. Thank you for being here. We'll see you next week. We will have Tali Ariav, who is a playwriting instructor as well as an acting teacher from Israel. And she's very cool. We'll yeah. see you then. <laughs> Bye.